Hello, everybody, and welcome to Meryl Talks Pop. I'm your host, Meryl Bissori, and guess what? Miracles can happen because I have here with me my girl, Myra. How are you? I'm so good. So excited that we finally are able to connect. Yes, it's been months since we've, we've been trying to, you know, schedule and you did you were you weren't able and I was unable or whatever. And then came Christmas and stuff. But right. here we are finally. Here we are. Yes, Myra, it's such a pleasure. I don't know what can I tell you. It's been 20 years, 20 years since the release of your, <laughs> 21 years since the release of your debut album, which yeah. I love. I adore this album. Like I always ask all my guests because most of my guests have 21 years of their uh, albums release. Do you feel like it's been 20 years? You know what? It's crazy to think of it like that because I, I think back and I look back and obviously it really has been that many years, but it doesn't feel like it. You know, it, it feels like and it was such good times mm -hmm. um, that it brings this nostalgia, you know, that um, um, it feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> Definitely totally. not ago, but <laughs> it's crazy to think yes. that. Yes, I, I can't believe that it's been so long since the release of the princess diaries where you had the lead single uh we're gonna get there and but i think like every time i watch the movie i'm like this movie seems like it was a year ago right it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's been so long yeah yeah you're right and i mean you know the, the funny thing is um i was saying earlier that everywhere i go i see it like it, it follows me and <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy, you know, because it just seems like it's it's there and it's now and it's it's just like it's hasn't been that many years because it's so it's so available and in your face all the time. I was on a, a flight uh, heading over to the East Coast and um, and there it was on the plane, <laughs> you know, yes. so I thought it was interesting. I thought it was so cool. And of course, you know, whenever I see it or I hear the song, it's just like the memories flow and and it's it's it was a beautiful time yes totally and we are here to remember those times as well as focusing on what you're doing right now which we will obviously get there because myra has some exciting news yeah. uh but well first of all how was it that you got your record deal so i started singing i was five um and let me tell you maria it was a uh, it was it's such a surreal experience because as a kid, you know, you don't really know what to expect. You know, you're just, um, you're just living your life mm -hmm. and, um, and being a kid. But I remember being very persistent with my parents and I come from a family of five siblings. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, oh. we're a bunch. And, <laughs> and, and so, you know, always, always, I think as parents, especially now that I'm a parent, I, I look back and I'm like, man, that, that would have been a mission for, for both mom and dad because they couldn't just fulfill one of their children's needs and wants and dreams, yes. but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. equal, you know, and, and kudos to them because they were always available for anything that any of my siblings or I wanted to uh, pursue. So I started very really young. I think I was about, I was around nine when my father finally said, Okay, he was probably tired of hearing me, you know, ask him to help me out and to make this happen for me. And, and um, finally, you know, I started singing around um, my community and eventually was on the newspaper and that led from one thing to another. Um, mm -hmm. I met Narda Michael Walden and who's, you know, he's the producer to women like uh, Whitney and Mariah and Aretha mm -hmm. Franklin. So obviously, you know, these incredible female artists, vocalists that mm -hmm, I've always mm -hmm. looked up to. And so that was a great experience going to him and having him, you know, lick me straight into the eye and say, she's got it, you know, you've mm -hmm. got it. And um, I'm going to, you know, do my best to to set you in the right direction. And, and so it was so, you know, he was kind of like a godfather in a way in the music scene for me because he took me straight to Disney. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm obviously, you know, he's in the loop of things because he's in, in the industry himself. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew that Disney was looking for uh, for a Latina artist to find. You know, Disney, mm -hmm. was, Disney was mainly known 
a soundtrack label and mm -hmm. not a recording artist label. So it was neat. It, it was neat to be able to be and to say, you know, that the first artist Latina ever mm -hmm. to be signed to the Walt Disney record, um, you know, game. So it's it's after that came came all the other amazing girls. And so I, I'm really proud of that. Yes. I mean, Latina power. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. but I understand, if I'm not mistaken, that you recorded an album first called Mensajera de tu amor or that's something right. like that. Okay, okay, that's right. So you're backtracking. Thanks for reminding me. Like, how could I forget, right? Um, yeah, because you look so young on the cover. You're absolutely right. At that <laughs> time, I was going on 10. So, you know, going back to that was the time that my father started to really get involved and, and you know, help me out with this dream that I had. And, um, and I was, yeah, I was going on 10. And he helped me both, you know, my, my family. I have to say my entire family because it becomes a sacrifice when mm -hmm. you come from a big family and it's kind of like doing one thing at a time for each kid, you know, because mm -hmm. it takes mm -hmm. energy and, and money, you know. So, um, so yeah, I was able to record a, my first album ever before the Disney drop, before you know, miracles happen and, and Siempre Milagro and all, all those albums. Um, I was able to, to um, record uh, something more rooted for me, which was my mm -hmm. mariachi album, Mensajera del Amor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it was the beginning of then, you know, what it was to experience being an independent artist at such a young age, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you I, were such a, you were a kid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was I was very much tiny. I was a little girl just with big big dreams and you know just getting to learn the wave of of what the industry, you know, mm -hmm. uh, was like and what was ahead for me. That's awesome. And and then well came this opportunity to make this pop album. Right. And did you write the songs from this album? I could tell you, but <laughs> first of all, I don't have the cover because <laughs> when I order it, uh -huh. They send it to me without the cover, and I'm like, you didn't oh. send the cover. And I'm like, oh, we're sorry, we're, we're, we're out of it, so well, whatever. So oh. that's why I'm showing you the okay. back. <laughs> I'll have to send you one with a cover, okay? <laughs> Please do. Please yeah. do. <laughs> I totally will. And I'll send you the other record as well, Mensajera del Amor, so you have it. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> the, um, you know, yeah, I was able to record that album after, short, not very long after the Mensajera del Amor, just a few years after that. I think mm -hmm. I, was, I was around 13 and then um, I, I recorded that album. But in, in that album, um, I did not get to write, um, you know, as I was just getting, I was kind of like a crossover, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. you brought that up because um, I never forget to mention that because that was my first, that was my beginning, you know, but I forgot this time. Thanks for reminding me. Um, and, and, you know, it was for me, it felt like a crossover because um starting with mariachi and i mean even in those days i remember you know having this accent uh because my first language is spanish and i may still mm -hmm. kind of have that accent but but then it was really heavy because i was just mm. transitioning i was just mm -hmm. transitioning and so i had never really sang uh american pop music you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so for me to have gone from a mariachi, complete mariachi style album and just in my upbringing, you know, the, my roots to switching it up to the the um, English uh, pop genre. Um, it was it was quite a bit of a of a, a challenge, you know, because I always uh -huh. found, myself, found myself kind of um, just finding the right words in English. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and now it's like the opposite. Now I have to practice both English and Spanish because <laughs> I'm losing them both. <laughs> but, but you got to record this album in both English and Spanish, which is great. Yes, yes. And, and not many artists do that. So that's, that's true. That is very true. I actually, we released the English version. And mm -hmm. then um, I want to say, I don't know how much longer after that. Not very long after that, we decided let's get in the studio and um, and record the Spanish version. Um, mm -hmm. At that time, it was nice that I had all these amazing producers be a part. Honestly, I got to work with like the 
the producers in the industry, you know, mm -hmm. during that era. And so, and still today, like Diane Warren, who's like a huge yes. producer, right? And so, so I mean, it, it was an incredible experience. I'm glad that they kind of took the lead on everything uh, because everything was so new to me, you know, as far mm -hmm. as the genre, the language, and um, and just the, the it was a, it was a new venture, you know, it was a new mm -hmm. venture, yeah. Yeah, and then um, the opportunity opportunity came to be part of the this of the um, Princess, Princess Diaries soundtrack. That's right. Okay. That's, right. That's right. Not too long after that, um, yeah, that that opportunity presented itself. Obviously, miracles happen, fit perfect with the movie, and yes. not to mention, you know, it's been such a great song in my life. Um, it's taken me around the world. It's done a lot of things for. I'm not, I'm going to say myself because it's done a lot for others. You know, it's done with the message that it carries. I feel like I've been able to fulfill mm -hmm. a lot of um, my, my reason why, you know, why I do mm -hmm. what I do and to be able to give back and um, into all kinds of communities. Um, so that song really just kind of transformed my, um, myself, you know, my life, my artistry, yes. my, my everything. So yeah. Every time I ask someone in my Instagram account or whatever, I'm like, your favorite 2001 songs and or artists, and everyone mentions you. So yeah, I, I love it. And when I said that I was going to interview you, they were like, oh my God, this isn't happening because everyone oh. was waiting to, to hear more about your stories with the Miracles Happen and, and more about your album, which happens to be so good. I always try to listen to who I'm going to interview that day when I'm yeah. working out, just to yeah. be like, you know, fresh with right. what I'm going to ask. Right. And today I was working out with your album and I was like, ah, oh, working, I'm dancing with uh, uh, Candy Boy, which was my favorite back in the day. Oh, I yeah. can't, those songs don't, don't sound 20 years. You know, they don't, they're, they're, it's, that's I think what the best part of these producers are, were and will forever be that they're so timeless. You know, yes. and so to have had that experience with these amazing producers that have that type of touch, you know, mm -hmm. to to their their art, um, a girl couldn't ask for anything better. You know, I, I it's funny because I do that once in a while too, where I'll sit and go back and listen to that the album, the record, and mm -hmm. and I'm I'm very impressed, very impressed till today. You know, twenty something years later that I can go back and listen to it. And it's just so, it's so good. It's a yes. good album. Yeah. But, so you still listen to your, your old I music? Do. I really do. I mean, sometimes I go on Spotify and, and, you know, I'll be on there listening to other artists and, and then think back on, oh, well, that producer did that song and he did one of my songs or she did one of my songs and I go back and listen, you know, and I'm like, yes. man, it's, it's, they're just such professionals with their, what they're doing and, and the timelessness of the music is like mm -hmm. incredible. incredible. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's still like it was released, released yesterday. It doesn't feel like it's been 21 years. That's so, and what was your, I'm sorry. What? Oh, I said it's good quality. <laughs> yeah. It's good quality. And yeah. what was your favorite song? Oh my God. Um, Maria, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, There's 13 songs. You have yeah. to have one. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's like they all have a different space in my heart and I feel a different way about each one of them. But I think my, my, I'm going to have to say a few because it's not just one. Okay. Um, so Wishing on the Same Star, which was the one that Diane Warren, um, you know, originally uh, produced. Mm -hmm. and it's such a beautiful song. Um, it's just a beautiful ballad. And I'm, I'm like a ballad queen. I wish I would have been able to do more ballads. Um, so that's, that song is a beautiful song to me. Obviously, yes. Miracles Happen, um, you know, just took me on the journey of a lifetime. And, um, oh, God. And then it's kind of between Dreams and... And Candy Boy. Candy Boy was such a good song. It's so it, fun. <laughs> it was so much fun to perform live. It was like probably the funnest song to perform with the girl dancers. And, you know, and they were um, 
they were crazy dancers because during that song actually they would do like like acrobatic stuff right like flips in the air and i mean they put on a good show to that song so uh, those are great stories i wish there was some more some um more videos from you performing from back in the day because i can barely find anything on youtube yeah you know what i'll have to post some yes I'll please post. do <laughs> yeah i'll have to dig into my library and i'll have my team help me out and uh, and post that especially you know with all the new things coming it'll be fun to, to have some of that um those clips available yes. on youtube so that that our generation you know that grew up with this music can in fact go back and, and check it out and, and just remember you know yes I, i would love to see them because well i wasn't able to see you live but uh, i mean i would love to see how you were performing back in the day it would be so much fun of course that's a great idea i'll have yeah to yes please do and um i was about to tell you when you mentioned wishing on the same star that song was first recorded in the 90s by yep. this australian group called girlfriend yep um and uh, it's so different when you hear that from multiple voices and a solo single so um right. i love both versions but uh, yours is is pretty cool and you were so young singing about something so deep <laughs> yeah yeah that's very true i feel like uh you know even though this album was a lot of fun and there's songs like candy boy in there that was totally fun mm -hmm. um there's also this maturity level you know mm -hmm. it, and uh and the quality you know it just it takes you it takes you to that space where you're like oh you know it's all fun but there's mm -hmm. all the maturity level and i think that was one of the funnest things about being on the road that i always saw not just you know the kids that were my peers having fun alongside with me but i also saw the parents mm -hmm. you know the parents really enjoy the show and so to me that was like oh my god like if i can have fun with both, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. eras of like, it's just the time difference is such a big gap, you know? Yes. So we were able to really enjoy each other and through the music. So that, that was great. Yes. It's good that you have both audiences, you know, the young ones and older ones and that they both enjoy. So right. I, 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 I love that. So, uh, other, cover from this album well because i think it was released on the same year but yours i think was later uh as if as if was, was <laughs> first recorded by black for the um bring it on soundtrack and uh, i again they were a group and you were a solo so you, right. you can hear both um versions you know it sounds different when it's a group and, the, and it's a solo singer so that's I've heard that's that. i love yeah. that song yeah. yes Uh, the meaning behind that song, I mean, the whole lyrics are like, whenever you are being cheated or, or whatever, like, you can dedicate that song to someone, you know? That's so. right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And another cover, Dancing in the Street, which was later used for another movie, uh, The Recess? Recess, yes. Recess. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were sounding in, you, you were heard on different movies. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? Um, yeah, it, it was, I love covers too, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it was always nice to hear the versions that were prior and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then the version that I had because I was able to just put my own twist on things and, mm -hmm. and make mm -hmm. my own, you know, as every artist should when you cover a song. Yes. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a blast. Dancing in the Street was also so much fun. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites. It was fun to record. It was fun to filmed the video for it and it was fun to be a part of the the movie recess so much mm -hmm. fun yeah yes i love the video too and you can find that video if you guys don't know it's available on youtube the video yeah. for miracles happen and dancing on the street yeah. and also for lie 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 which is what i was about to ask you um was that an official video or was that like independent um no it was you know it was an official video the only I guess difference about those videos compared to the ones um, like, you know, Miracles Happen and Dancing in the Street, where that I recorded or I filmed those for the audience in Japan. And I had a Japanese team um, come here to the US from Japan. Uh, they came here a few times before I actually went to Japan. 
and we were able to film Lie Lie Lie. And mm-hmm. um, and there was also another song. I don't know if you're familiar with. There's a one called Step Into the Light um, that we also. And that one is also on YouTube. That's on mm-hmm. YouTube as well. So if you wanted to check it out, you can find it. Um, so and, and so those songs came from the release that we had in Japan. Um, right. And so those were the videos that we chose as a team to um, to release over there because those were the songs that were Lai 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 wasn't added. Lai 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 was already on the album. Step mm-hmm. Into the Light was added. And I want to say You're the Dream, which was the song that I performed at the Special Olympics in Japan when I was there. Whoa. So, right. So there was like just a few other songs that were added onto that album in Japan. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much where that came from. You know, they, mm-hmm. they did, they independently, you can say that, you know, they independently came from Japan and, um, and decided, well, we want to release her in Japan, you know? And mm-hmm. I was like, well, release me in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what an honor. I mean, because Japan's crowd, it's like amazing, you know? <laughs> Honestly, yes. I, I feel like, um, you know, they're they're some of the most beautiful human beings that I've I've met. I've traveled the world, you know, and and mm-hmm. I've met beautiful people everywhere in the world, everybody with their own culture, their own style, their own upbringing system. You know, everything's so different. Um, mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed Japan. Um, Japan showed me a lot of love. Um, they showed me they taught me a lot of just their upbringing. They took me to so many different places uh, as far as sharing, you know, their mm-hmm. culture with me. And so I really mm-hmm. appreciated that. I appreciated that so much. Yes. I, I know when artists go to Japan to promote is because they see something in you. Not everybody gets to be promoted in Japan. Oh, yeah. So you were I, lucky. I, I totally, you're right. I felt like one of the lucky ones for sure. And, you, and being so young, what an honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know, I was, you know, Maria, when I was over there, I was really taken by the fact that um, there's a lot of people that speak Spanish there. And, and I mean, not to my surprise, because I mm-hmm. feel like um, people there are just so, how, what's the right way to say it? Um, they're very into education. Yes. Which, <laughs> you know, which is amazing. And I feel like for them, the more that they add onto their plate, the better. I would go crazy personally. Like, I don't know how they can learn, you know, all kinds of languages. But but I remember being there and, and just being very honored, you know, not mm-hmm. just being there, but by the fact that a lot of people were able to speak Spanish to me. And I was blown away. Yes. Yeah. Well, I went to a, a Japanese school for eight years uh, here, here in what? Mexico. Yes. Oh, my- Awesome. Yes, there's a huge community here in Mexico, and I, uh, my parents decided to join me there. Wow. I don't know why, because I don't have any Japanese <laughs> background. I well, mean, how lucky. Yeah, and, and it was pretty cool learning, you know, from the culture. They are, like you mentioned, uh, so much into education, and, and so I totally understand what you're saying. Yes. And, um, well, you travel to a lot of countries then to promote uh, your music. Uh, what was your favorite? Oh my God. Um, you know what? I, I don't, when I think of like, um, countries, I honestly, like everywhere that I got to visit, I took something beautiful with me. Um, Mm -hmm. because there's beauty everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And in every single person that you could actually come across, if Mm -hmm. you look for it, there's beauty everywhere, you know, and Mm -hmm. one thing that I've always been big on as far as, um, taking with me the good, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, Every single place that I visited was amazing. For me, it was more of like the experience, you know, mm-hmm. that I had in different places. Because I could say I, when I was in Japan, it was really honestly one of the highlights of my, you know, of, of my career. I had mm-hmm. a blast there. Um, and it was like all around. I just really, really, really enjoyed my time there. I was there for a few months. Uh, but then I can also say that I've had experiences here in the U.S. even, um, like on this side of, of, you know, the East Coast in New York, where I was able to perform for um, the United Nations. And um, and it was a huge event uh, put on 
by children for children. It's like I'll never forget that I was able to to perform with the 300 piece orchestra of Argentinian kids my age, you oh. know. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's like you know to be able to to gather that many kids with all this mm-hmm. talent from around the world, and we all come together into one place and we give back with our talent. Um, on top of that, there was people that you know that I've you know looked up to all my life. I remember getting a a standing ovation from Nelson Mandela. So for me, that's another highlight of my career. Whoa. You know. And it was in that instance, in that moment where we were just all there giving back to the children from Africa, et cetera, you know? And so it's the experiences. I was able to go to Puerto Rico also where I had another beautiful experience and mm-hmm. was going to a, um, a hospital for kids with cancer. Mm-hmm. And there I was brought by the wish foundation and, um, you know, to be somebody's last wish, um, big or small, um, whatever it may be that they're going through in life, you know, uh, to me, that was the ultimate honor. You know, mm-hmm. that was the mm-hmm. ultimate um, message of, of what I was doing with my life, of trying to make a difference through my music. Mm-hmm. And, and so to be able to do that and go to those places, it wasn't just there. It was so many other different um places that i visited you know there were foundations or there were hospitals or you know where i was able to just sit there and and talk to these children and bring them some smiles and mm-hmm. sing them you know and let them play with my hair and and just be a part of their you know their their own journey because we're all on a journey and mm-hmm. and I feel like we're all here for a reason and we all connect for a reason so it's those experiences. I can't really put a mm-hmm. label country. It's just mm-hmm. the experiences, you know, that I had in different places. Yeah, because you went for uh, to the happiest moments to, you know, more serious situations. So you oh. got to experience both things. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, and and I'll I'll be totally honest with you. It's very, um, it was overwhelming. You know, it was overwhelming, and it was um, something that always left me in silence after leaving mm-hmm. always always mm-hmm. it's silence so of of first it, it's it's sadness you know because you wish you could do so much more you know mm-hmm. you could actually save someone's life like if there was only that you know miracle and sometimes there is you know i i do mm-hmm. believe in miracles so i i have i'm a person of a lot of faith you know and so mm-hmm. so leaving there you know obviously disappointed and and heartbroken and sad and um and also never forgetting like my father would always tell me um don't forget you know that you were able to be present for them and Mm -hmm. then through your talent through your blessings you were able to show up and and bring them a smile Mm -hmm. you know that makes a difference and you know even though you may not think you know, that it, it, how could it be enough? Because that's how I felt. Mm-hmm. My father was always great at reminding me that, you know, all that matters, being there and being present and showing up when they call on you, um, you know, to, to give back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that for me, that's, that's, it's everything. Everything. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you were very blessed to, you know, be there, being there for all those, uh, kids and everybody else that you met. So it was it was huge for someone who was 13, 14 years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how did you feel to be that famous and to be, you know, like um, rep- representing, you know, the youth from the 2000s? Yeah, yeah. I, at first, um, I think when it all kind of starts happening, right, uh, with Miracle, with the release of Miracles Happened in the Princess Diaries, um, at first it was kind of a thing where you don't notice it and you don't realize it until you're, you know, you're out there promoting and you're mm-hmm. working really hard and you're showing up to all these different events, etc. But you notice it when, you know, when you get those calls, when mm-hmm. you get those calls on, you know, we'd like you to be a part of, 
uh, representing, I don't know if you're familiar with like Limited 2 back in the day. Um, it was mm -hmm. like the store, right, for for the kids, for us mm -hmm. young girls, mm -hmm. teenagers, um, that was really popular. And so um, starting there and then going from that to, you know, the Princess of Japan would love for you to come perform for her. She just had her baby and Miracles Happen is a big song in her life and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then the Special Olympics come up and, and then Nelson Mandela gives you a standing ovation. And then it becomes like, oh, wait a minute, like, you know, these amazing uh, people are, are recognizing who I am and it's mm -hmm. all music. And to be honest with you, it when you're on the go, 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 go every single day and it's just, that's your livelihood, you don't really pay attention to that, you know? Mm -hmm. you're, you're more focused on how can I keep growing and how can I keep doing what I but staying true to myself as well, because it's a crazy industry, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know. So, so to be able to to be there mentally with myself, I've always been really proud of myself for that. Um, not selling myself short, you know, and and mm -hmm. who I am, and and so I feel like I've I've dealt with it pretty pretty good, you know. And there's times mm -hmm. where I would go to Walmart in the middle of the night, and you know. <laughs> somebody would recognize me and I would be so embarrassed because I for, I would forget, you know, I'd like, I'm mm -hmm. just a person. I'm yes. really on a person like anybody else. And there's times where I, you know, my hair's up in a bun and I don't have any makeup on and I have mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. job on and I just <laughs> run to the store and, you know, and grab whatever <laughs> I need. Uh, but, but it's when those people stop you and are you Myra, you know, and like, oh. can I get a picture and, and here I am looking all crazy, right? Um, <laughs> so embarrassed because, uh, do you want to take a picture with me looking like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but how sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, it, it's it's those little things where there's a lot of things that happen like that. Like, so I'll be through in, through the drive through at times too and, and get these uh, recognitions sometimes. And I'm just like, I forget, you know? And, mm -hmm. and at the time, uh, I feel this overjoy of being able to say there's this upbringing that um, that grew up with me, you know, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. forget. So it's it's beautiful. It's yes. it's a beautiful thing to say, you know, that that I could see all of you guys on my YouTube channel and watching my videos and commenting and and I'm here, you know. I don't forget any anyone and um, just took a break, but but we're back. Yes, you are back and with everything, you know, yeah. like we say here in Mexico, de regreso con todo. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's uh, that's awesome. And my my other question was being on the road, were you traveling with uh, your mom, your dad, or were you alone? How was it for you being away from your family? Oh, my father always traveled with me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was not a day that I was ever by myself. I was a very, very blessed kid. Um, while my mom stayed, you know, back home with my siblings, I I was fortunate to have my dad to come on the road with me and my oldest brother. So mm -hmm. I was always very, you know, protected, very sheltered, no matter where I was at in, in you know, my life and my career. And um, yeah, I had my dad. My dad was there all along. Oh, oh that's good. Because sometimes when I speak to other uh, uh, pop stars from the time, they said, I was traveling all by myself and I miss my parents and I miss my family, but you were so lucky to have oh, yours. With oh, yeah. You know, I couldn't imagine it any other way because, um, you know, like I, I tell you, it's such a rough industry that I couldn't have imagined being there by myself. So when, I, and you're right, a lot of a lot of young artists go on and they want to pursue this dream so badly, you know, that they'll take the risks of being out on their own and, mm -hmm. and this and that. But but for me um, and my family, we always felt like it's not worth being by yourself. You know, yes. it's, it's it's important to be. And, and I'm Mexican. Yes, <laughs> I told, that's what I was about to tell you. Uh, us Latinos and Mexicans, we're like our families always yeah. go together to everywhere. So <laughs> it's... it's it's so Mexican, so Latino that I, I totally understand. That. Yes. So, <laughs> and tour, touring, how was touring? Who were you touring with? What songs did you enjoy performing the most? Yeah, I mean, I, I was able to tour with um, quite 
a few pop stars during that that uh, generation. If you remember, um, I'm trying to think of the group that Jesse McCartney came from. Green uh, Street. Street, that's right. That's yes. right. So I, I remember being on an actual tour with just them. It was him, it was them and myself headlining the tour. And it was such an incredible time. Um, and there was one song in particular that I can't remember right now. I know if I looked for it, I would totally recognize it. But there was a song that they had that was super popular back then. And uh, probably it was It Happens Every Time. Why that's right. Yes. <laughs> You're I'm so a huge fan. I am a huge fan because I recently interviewed one of them. Oh, that's awesome. Which one? <laughs> Greg Raposa. Oh, how awesome. All my love to them. They're all, they're all yes. equally talented. And yes. uh, yeah, and so, yeah, so I, I got to tour with them and that was incredible. I got to tour with Aaron uh, for a mm -hmm. long time, actually. And uh, we did some dates with the Backstreet Boys. Um, well, let me say, let me go back with Aaron. I feel like because we were on tour for such a long time with um, with him, I got to learn a lot of his songs, you know, mm -hmm. so um, and there's this ballad that I absolutely love. And I actually have it somewhere on my playlist, but um, oh God. And of course, I, I, I forget when I get put on the but, A uh, ballad from Aaron. I only yeah. know one because I'm not so familiar with his songs. I, I wasn't so much into his music back then, but a ballad. Um, do you remember? Is that, that the one? one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I could picture it was that. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. Do you remember? Um, and so, you know, and then I was also, his sister was on tour with us, too, at the time. Oh, Leslie Carter? Leslie, yeah. Oh. And, you know, I don't know if you know, but, like, we got to become the bestest of friends. Oh, and, really? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I actually, you know what? I, I'm going to show it off because I love it and I'm proud of it. I have her name tattooed on me. Oh. Uh, yeah, with her little... A little angel and so sad that she passed away. So so sad. Um, yeah, it's something that that uh, you know it changes you, especially when when you've become so close, you know. And mm -hmm. to me, she was like a sister, and I can honestly say that for the rest of my siblings as well, she was always around my family mm -hmm. and very loved. And so um, I'm glad that we got to share a lot of time together, and that she was around my family a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I didn't know that you guys were um, so close. Yeah. So, and who else did you tour with? Because I'm not sure if you toured with Soluna. No. Oh my God. I would have, I would have peed my pants because I love <laughs> Soluna. No, I oh. never, I never got a chance to tour with them, but because I think I was more like into the, well, at least the tours that they added me on to were more of like the Nickelodeon, the Dis Radio mm -hmm. Disney, you know, and mm -hmm. all like the Baja Men, and um, I remember well, who was the Mambo something? Um, <laughs> the, uh, Lou Vega? Lou Vega, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I mean, there was uh, there was so many artists during that time. There was Clay. Um, mm -hmm. There was... Oh, Nobody's God. Angel. Nobody's Angel. I did touring with them. Um, quite a few, you know. I even did O Town. Remember O Town? Oh, I love them. Yes. Me too. Me too. <laughs> we did some shows together. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, randomly there was like shows with everybody. But but mm -hmm. had I had a performance with Saluna, I would have freaked out. You know, later on in life, I became um, buddies with, uh, with T. Lopez, who was a part of... I recently interviewed her. Did you really? Oh, yes, God. she's so cool. And she's also she's Mexican, the, so. She's the <laughs> coolest. Like, I absolutely love her. I adore her. I look up to you. I just sent her a message a little while ago just to let mm -hmm. her know, like, to remind her how much I love her and look up to her. And, <laughs> and I think she's just wonderful, you know, all around as, a, as an artist, as a mother, uh, you know, as an as independent woman, um as a wife like she's just like she has like that title of everything and i love yes. her for i love her for she's it. she's so cool and, and uh so luna was a great group too oh yeah oh yeah 
Yeah. I remember because sometimes I, I posted something about Soluna and you once comment about them I, and I thought that I, you toured together. So. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yeah, no, when I ever see Soluna anything tagged anywhere or, or um, <laughs> anywhere, I'm that fan. I'm like, oh, and you know, oh, okay. Okay. I'm not a big fan of like a lot of um, artists, I guess you can say. Like I, I enjoy a lot of music, but mm -hmm. like for me to say, oh, I'm a fan, like I'm a fanatic, right? I can't really mm -hmm. say that about a lot of artists, but so Luna is one of them. And so, oh. yeah, so uh, you posted it. I mentioned something. I said something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's why I thought you guys toured together. But anyway, uh, and what yeah. was your favorite song to perform? My favorite song to perform? Mm, I think it was Lie, Lie, Lie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, because Lie, Lie, Lie had mm -hmm. this like, really cool edge to it right but it was powerful too it mm -hmm. was super powerful like in the bridge part once it came into the bridge yes just super powerful you know and and it's just a good song good good song yeah okay so that was your favorite yeah and then what happened because you were successful you had your success you were touring all over the country and all and other countries as well and why didn't you release more music myra you know what thanks for asking a lot happened a lot happened um mainly the management team that i had at the time sorry am i trying to get comfortable um mainly the the management team that i had at the time there was a lot of there's a lot of conflict um you know with with um accounting and and the things that were telling me you know were being paid for by by this person, by that person, by people who contracted me for certain things, but it, there was a lot of lies, you know? And so it became, from it being really like my dream, my hobby and everything that I love to do, um, it became very stressful for me. And mm -hmm. I think there came a time where I, I even got a little sick um, so my 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 mom just basically told my dad you bring her home you know bring her home she's stressing over things that she shouldn't be stressing about mm -hmm. and this is where you know as a as for my parents as far as my parents i'm so glad that like i tell you that they've always been there you know and they've been a part of everything because mm -hmm. because they were able to protect me you know even mm -hmm. even when i wanted to continue and and didn't understand certain things. Um, they were always there to kind of guide me in that way where they kept mm -hmm. me sane. They kept me sane and didn't want me to lose myself in, you know, in, in Hollywood because it's very easy to do that. And yes. so once you start seeing certain things about um, people and money, you know, and, and how um money hungry certain people can become etc you know once you start getting some type of popularity and fame a lot comes with it and yes. so i think part of my team was too focused on that and versus making sure that there was a balance in my life you know and i was overworking over overworking to the point where i hadn't seen my mom in two years and wow. yeah and so that became that became very very heavy you know mm -hmm. um and so then you know after that i took a break i was able to do other things i also had a daughter who's now um she's gonna be 11 in may so whoa mm -hmm. yeah it's been amazing to learn that part of life and oops, and become a a mom um mm -hmm. And, uh, and I've got a chance to go to college and study some, do some business schooling. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's, so there's a lot that's happened in between. So it was a great time for me to do some of the things that I wasn't really free to do then, you know, mm -hmm. which was go to school, you know, which was have a normal life. And, and I've been able to have that, bring that balance into my life, thanks to my mm -hmm. parents. And, um, and, you know, now that my, my, my daughter is older and, and she's been kind of pushing my buttons to get back into music, oh. um, yeah, there's, 
no reason for me not to, you know, and she always tells me, she's like, just because you're a mom, you know, doesn't mean that you forget about who you are and what you want, you know, to do mm -hmm. with your life. So, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> she, honestly, yes. She's like this little angel. She's my, she's my mini manager. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great um, to get back in the studio this last year and a half or so. Um, we've been mm -hmm. really just working on developing a, a new sound, you know? And so mm -hmm. from from the break, you know, with the management situation back with my Disney days to now, um, it's been nice. I feel refreshed. I feel like, oh, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. lose myself. I was able to hold on to my roots and, and who I am as a person. I was able to become a mom, um, able to go to school. I've, I've been able to do so many things that were also on my on my bucket list, you know? Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, that must be, that's great. I mean, that you got to achieve all the stuff. Definitely, definitely. I've had time to just enjoy my family. You know, all those mm -hmm. years uh, of hard work and, and really it's sacrifice. You don't realize you know, you don't realize how much you miss out on and how many birthdays, you know, of your siblings and, and your mom and, and, you know, just moments, special moments. And like you said, we're very, very tight knit, you know, as, as Latinos. Yes. Um, so it was hard. It was really, really hard, but it was all very rewarding to be able to come back home and, and, you know, have that protection from my parents first and mm -hmm. foremost to, to ha you know, stick up for me and say, she's coming home. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, you enjoy that time when you were performing and then you just oh, go back to a normal life and that's okay. I mean, oh, yeah. we, all, and, <laughs> we all want that. Absolutely. And you know what, Mariel, I feel like when you start something and it becomes, you start it with your whole heart, you know, and it's your passion and it's uh, your dreams. Um, you're able to manifest a lot of things through your music for other people, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. once it becomes about greed and once it becomes about money and and um, overworking and overloading and all of that, it takes a lot of that beauty away, you know, mm -hmm. and it becomes something different. So it's nice to be able to check out and say, you know what, I'm, I'm good off of all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll check back in when it's convenient for my mental and my emotional state my yeah. And that's great because sometimes they, uh, some artists get to, you know, lose their minds because they are so overwhelmed with their jobs and they don't have time for their families and to their, to themselves too. So uh, they feel like they, I'm sorry, they fall into depression and. Oh yeah. Stuff. So that's, I've seen, you know, I've seen it happen way too many times and um, you know, firsthand with very special people that mm -hmm. I've had. I've grown up with and so and and that's why I say um thanks to my parents you know for for being able to to have my back like that that's great that's great and now 21 years later Myra is releasing new music yay which is awesome tell us all about your new song which is going to be available on the 14th of February yes you can pre-order it now um mm -hmm. iTunes and um it's called La Llave, so it's mainly in Spanish. It has some English in it. I can't mm -hmm. wait for you to hear it. It's um, It was such a fun song to write. Um, and by the way, I have to say a big shout out to, I, I never forget, you know, the team that, that has restarted with me all over again because it's been a journey and, and it's mm -hmm. so crazy to kind of start back all over again and, um, and restart your team. So my team from Sacramento, California, I just, I love you guys. Thank you so much for, for everything that, you know, you guys continue to support me with when it comes to the music and the writing and the studio time and, and just pushing me, you know, to be the best that, that I can be, that I am at this time of my life. And, and, um, and with this new journey, mm -hmm. um, you know, to K and to uh, tracks and to Ben Keith, to Q um, to Ray, there's just so many. It takes a village. Um, <laughs> my girl Brittany, I mean, so, so many people. Um, thank you so much for your support. Um, it's because of them that I've been able to come up with this sound. And, mm -hmm. and it's different, you know, it's different than, than what 
what I, you're used to hearing, Mariel, with my, you know, with my pop Disney yes. stuff. And and yes. now that we're older, you know, we're older and um, and are able to do be a bit bit more in tune with the uh, with the writing of it, with mm -hmm. the direct where it's going and all that good stuff. So I'm super proud, super super proud. Yes, I already listened to the song because you sent it to me, I, and I was like, okay, let's see what I can expect because, like you mentioned, I'm used to hearing this, Myra. Yes, yes. Let's all say that we all grow up. I mean, yeah. we we don't have to always, you know, stay in the same line. So when right. I listened to it, I was like, oh my god, this is Myra talking. This is Myra <laughs> singing because it, it, it's a very um more um how you say it like uh, let me say in <laughs> no, let me say it in in Spanish because I, I I can't remember the word the word in English like atrevido. Oh yeah, it it's very. It, I don't even know how to say that in in English. But it's more in your face and in, in in like uh, in I guess in in just this moment of like age wise, like I'm in my thirties now. You know what I mean? So it's yes. like it's it's more revealing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more like mm, yeah, revealing. I don't know how to say it in English. Me but, either. Uh, <laughs> the word in Spanish is perfect for it. I just can't think of an exact translation in English, yes. But, it is. Yeah, your guys are gonna love it. Uh, it's totally with today's rhythms. Yes. Yeah, I totally feel some reggaeton in there. Yes. Uh, I, I, feel I, I'm, I don't listen to any reggaeton at all because it's not my thing, but uh, I totally hear it in, on the street and so I can totally feel that it was that genre. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, no, it definitely has that, you know, that um, part of the Latino genre in there. And um, mm -hmm. I kind of think of it as, um, I was even thinking before releasing it, because let me tell you, it's been so hard for me to come from the kind of music that I come from, right? The, what you're used to hearing yes. as far as me and, and to like find the right sound. I've been like, I've been jumping from so many different sounds, right? And mm -hmm. nothing is good enough for me. And so mm -hmm. it's been hard. And I think I've recorded, I don't know how many songs, girl, but it's mm -hmm. been a lot. So, so many songs and just none of them made the cut, right? But mm -hmm. but for me, I feel like um, I've become a little bit in tune with like Carol G in her, um, there's some songs, you know, that I like, that I enjoy of her. And I'm not big on reggaeton either. Like I'm, you mm -hmm. know, I'm kind of, I'm all over the place, but I'm not huge on reggaeton. And mm -hmm. so I guess, you know, when I wrote this song and me having like this, uh, this likeliness that I have for like Carol G, it kind of took me to that vibe. And mm -hmm. it, you know, and so it kind of helped me um, feel free to like release whatever it is that I, that's in me. And, mm -hmm. and so it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to record and to finally say, you know what, if I don't release this, I'm not going to release anything. So I better start releasing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yes. So yeah. can we expect an album soon? Definitely. Definitely. Um, we'll be working on it this year. There's going to be a few other um, songs coming out here, just singles that are going to be coming out in the next uh, month or two, three. And, um, and then after that, um, you can definitely expect an album. And and we'll have to see, you know, I'm going to have to send you some as I, as I'm still developing, you know, yes. <laughs> and get your input because I really do appreciate that you're so in tune, you know, with the sounds and the quality and of music that I, I can always appreciate sending someone like yourself, my music. And oh, thank you. yeah, no, I would be glad to hear, to listen to your music. I mean, we can wait for more Myra music to come. <laughs> I mean, you left us expecting 21 years ago. Oh, I mean, I, oh, <laughs> I, and, and, and would you uh, consider, you know, like releasing these songs again, probably now that you're older I, and with a different sound? You know what? I, I haven't thought about that, but since you're bringing it up, that just made me feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Maybe that's something that needs to be in the works with, um, you know, obviously I'd have to talk to, to the people at Disney and the team there. But um, but it's something that I see, like, no issue with, with 
you know, being a part of and, and uh, bringing back out just as a, um, a way to appreciate, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything was done then and, and give it like a new little twist into today's, today's world. That would be great. I mean, I love that you don't feel ashamed of your past music because that's the music that built you. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. And, it, and you're right. That's, you know, and, and it, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart because, because I was, you know, I, I was such a big part of it and it was such a big part of me. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad that you told me that so, because sometimes you'll hear some artists saying, oh, I regret releasing this and doing that. And I love it when artists say, I'm fine with what I did in the past because oh, yeah. that's the, I was, I don't know, a teenager and I decided to release music teen related. I oh mean, yeah. And, and it's great. <laughs> and, and it's like you said, um, because the music you could hear it today and it doesn't sound like it was released 20 years ago. Like honestly, That's one of the things that I'm the most proud of as an artist, um, mm -hmm. the, the longevity, the timelessness of the music. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I'll always appreciate it, always, because it's such good music. So I'm, I'd be all for uh, re-recording and re-releasing any of these tracks. Maybe we should make a poll and see what we should start with. Yes, that would be great. I mean, I, I think everybody would will vote for uh, Miracles Happen yeah. because it's a classic. But definitely. Uh, definitely you should think about other songs from the album and do that oh, yeah. in a more 2022 <laughs> sound, you know. I, I will let my guys know because we are always looking for something to do, you know, as far as the music. And that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Yeah, well. Let's let's hope for that. We'll <laughs> have time. Shout out when it's done for giving us the motivation. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be great. Um, now about your songs, I'm gonna tell you the the title of the song, and you're gonna rank them for me, like okay. from one being not your favorite, and ten, like your favorite. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Let's start with lie, lie, lie. Oh God, ten. Ten. Okay. Yeah. Candy boy. 10. <laughs> Hard. Like a girl in love. Uh, that was like a seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, miracles happen. 10. Bye bye, my love. Uh, six. Okay. Uh, 25 hours a day. Oh, that's like a nine. I really like that one too. It's so cute. Yeah. Um, wishing on the same star. 10. Dancing in the street. Ten. <laughs> Where are you at? That was more of an eight. It was okay. Okay. It was cool. Girls like boys. Five. You don't like that song so much, okay? Not. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, as if. That was also up there. Probably nine. Hanging up on you. Mm, seven. And dreams? Uh, nine. It's up there. Well, it's a very high score, you know, like that you, the ones you've been giving. So that means you really do love your early work, and that's amazing. <laughs> I honestly do. I honestly do. From the bottom of my heart, um, it's a project that I will forever be proud of. And all of us that grew up with it will always be thankful for that. <laughs> oh, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Yes. Now let's go into the uh, to the questions from the fans. Like I always tell them, uh, please send your questions. Um, we have people from Canada. Uh, we have Andrew from Canada. Jen. Oh, hi, Jen from Canada too. Wyatt Merrifield. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, she already mentioned what she's been doing since she released Miracles Happen. Your favorite 90s and 2000s moments? Moments? I mean, I like what moments? Like my moments? Like the things that. Yeah, you, you can say that your moments. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um. You know what? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like, um, just in general, because I'm. I'm. It's coming to me. Um, I 
loved, like I loved watching the Disney Channel when I was younger. Mm-hmm. That was to me, like, um, in a way, was like the part of my escape from when, like, I just didn't want to think about like the hard work that I had coming up or whatever. When I would take a mental break, I would watch like uh, the uh, Lizzie McGuire show, <laughs> or <laughs> you know, or like Stevens, or um, I was even into like. Does Rugrats count? I don't remember. Yes. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Rugrats and like Doug, the show Doug. Oh, yes. Yes. Super into that show. Um, I, you know what? The other thing I like to do is I was always on MTV. I loved watching music videos and all the artists go on MTV for their interviews. And yes. Uh, yeah. So when, those- M- when yes, when MTV used to air music videos because now it's yeah. everything except music videos. Exactly. Exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, those were the times. Like oh my god, I um, I wish they were still around. Yes, I know those those were the good days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I uh, hope you and your family are doing good. Um, I was listening to your, your Spanish album. I love Que Te Crees y Te Voy a Decir Adios are bops. Oh, thank you. Gracias. That, that's uh, Cesar from Brazil. Oh, um, I love that. How was meeting Hilary Duff? It was great. Um, we hung out for quite some time, too. And uh, and that was always good. It was It was fun. We got to do shopping and, you know, be kids together and and do some projects together, too. The the UNICEF, um, a United Nations show that we put on was something that, you know, we were both very, very a part of. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm trying to think of all the other things because we had a lot of just downtime to be kids, like where we would I'd be on tour with Aaron or the Backstreet Boys or whoever. And. Um, and she would show up, you know, and so we had time to hang out backstage and, um, uh, she's a sweetheart. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun times being a kid and, and, you know, get out. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. I I love Hilary's career too. Uh, we need Myra's English album on Spotify. I totally agree because I I think, oh, yes. I, I don't know if it's available in some other countries, but at least not in Latin America. I'm gonna check on that because there's no reason why it shouldn't be available. I know. <laughs> why? <laughs> um, have you ever been to Brazil? I have not been to Brazil. That's one place I I would love to go visit. Yeah, people there is amazing. So, and you have a lot of fans there. Oh, I love it. Thank it you guys so much. Great. Yeah, uh, Myra is an icon. She's so beautiful and seems that she hasn't aged a bit. I know uh-huh. how she does that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, much. Uh, I have uh, oh, yes, rest in peace, Chris Trusdale who, from Dream Street, who passed away. Oh, that's right. You know, that's another yes. person. That, um, that was that so also- shocking. Very shocking. I actually, you know what? It's something that's not, um, I couldn't even remember that because it's been so shocking and I, I can't believe that he's, he's another one that's gone, you know, and too soon. Yes. Too soon. Yes, it's a shame. Uh, what's your opinion on Nick Carter? My opinion on Nick, um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I don't really know. I don't I don't it's not that I don't know. It's just that um I'm a very respectful person, you know, and that's just how how I've been brought up. But as far as personally, I don't think I can get into it because I'll be like a mess just cuz I think of Leslie and I think of a lot of things. Um mm-hmm. as an artist, um he's great, you know. He's been mm-hmm. and is I want to say very active right with his music I, I think I'm not I don't stay too much um like on board with following him around following what he's doing with his life but um I don't know I just all I could say is that um he was good to me you know he was good to me the time that I was around and um he was always very um just very kind very kind to me 
Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into private lives either because I mean, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I try to stay away from privacy, that. <laughs> you know, everybody's got privacy and we got to respect that and certain things that, you know, that you may or may not know, they may or may not be true even at the end of the day. So that's why you can't speak on them. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, Cesar says, if I was a millionaire man, I'd like to reunite all your you pop stars from early, early 2000s and make a big reunion tour. Uh, uh, totally. That's what I'm, yeah. <laughs> I would love to do. If but, that could happen, would you do it? Of course, in a heartbeat. That would be great. That would be <laughs> so cool. Relive, yes, anything to relive um, such beautiful moments. I'm down for that. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is there any male or female Latin artist that you would like to collaborate with? Mm -mm. You know what? Um, I wouldn't mind doing a song with like, there might be like a few, cause there's different styles that I've always wanted to kind of um, like try and just like, cause I enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, for instance, I would love to do a song with Bad Bunny. And then I would love to do a song with um, Cristian Nodal. And um, do, are you from? <laughs> Yeah, are you familiar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then, he's dating Belinda. <laughs> that's right. That's yes. right. And I would like to do a song with like, I don't know, maybe even Ricky Martin, you know, and uh Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, and when I think of like girls, like I'm trying to think of a girl that I really enjoy pop wise, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm a big fan. And here I go again with saying, like, this is actually very, very true. I'm a big fan of uh, Bella Nova. And, um, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, see, mm -hmm. and they're all over the place. Like, it's completely different styles. So, yes. They're, they're, like, more electronic. Definitely. So. Definitely. <laughs> so, you know, and then I would just like to do something with, like, you know, the girls that I grew up with. It'd be cool to do a song with Hillary. You know, and that would uh, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, uh, that would be great. Let's see if that we can make that happen sometime. Right. I mean, that would be <laughs> awesome. I I didn't know you like Belanova. For those who don't know, Belanova is a Mexican group uh, mm -hmm. that plays uh, techno electro music. Right. They're right. pretty cool. They're pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So, um, my questions that I always ask to my guests: uh, Your favorite male singer. Uh, man, my favorite male singer. Oh, that's so hard. Everybody tells me that. <laughs> it is. Uh, mm, oh, my God. I can't even think of one because there's so many, and that's bad. Um. My favorite male artist. Mm. Oh, I'm so bad. I, you know what? And I, it might be like um, somebody that, like, I really I enjoy baby face. And I know this is like, like back in the day, right? Like more no, art. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy him. I enjoy a lot of like, um, like, I guess it's R and B, R and B music. Like as far mm -hmm. as male voices, I really appreciate like Casey and JoJo and like Babyface. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they're it's it's today's music or from back yeah. then. Yeah. As long as they're your favorite. I mean. Oh yeah. There's you know. Different. T. Lopez from Soluna didn't hesitate at all when I asked her, and she was like, Vicente Fernandez, that's it. No? So, <laughs> really? Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's very, <laughs> you know, like mariachi, you're the, yeah. the Mexican yeah. style, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think, you know what, it's it's hard when, like, when you're a vocalist yourself, because for myself, like, I listen to so many different artists, mm -hmm. and that is a hard question, because I feel like, I love different artists for different reasons, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's hard. It's a hard one. Yes. But I could see why T would choose Vicente. 
Totally. Yes. Yeah, totally. And um, your favorite female singer? Oh, my favorite <laughs> singer. Honestly, like my all time favorite singer. And this is going to sound so cliche because I feel like she's everybody's favorite singer. But I mean, she truly is Selena. Selena, you know, Selena Quintanilla back in the day, like she to me is like someone that I will always look up to. And I think it's for the same reason that she was able to to jump to so many different genres. Mm -hmm. God, she was good in every single one of them. Yes, she, she was. She was great. She was great. Yeah. Your favorite girl band? A Sol Luna. <laughs> of course, Sol Luna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your favorite boy band? Mm, I has to. I can't. It has to be Backstreet Boys. Okay. And yeah. your favorite uh, mixed gender group? Um, I think RBD. Okay, we are jumping from baby face to a okay. <laughs> that's what that's what I love because the musical the uh, music is you know everywhere you know it doesn't matter the genre even so yeah and and you know I, I also got some time to um to be around some of the characters from you know from that group so it you know it, it like it becomes personal I guess you know you But, know them. <laughs> I mean, I've performed with some of them, yeah. And so it's been nice to, um, you know, to get to just, you know, share stages and share red carpet mm -hmm. events, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, Cesar says, uh, if you had to pick four singers, including you, to form a girl group, who would you choose? Oh, that's Ooh, that's one. a good question. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. I think it would be... Um, It would have to be, and you know what? I don't even know her actual name name because I know the band is Belanova, but it oh, would be Denise. Then is that her name? Okay, wow, I can't believe I don't know her name, but yeah. So she would be one of them. Okay. Um, Demi Lovato. Okay. Okay. And and they're so different. Um, yes. <laughs> and let me think. Let me think. Oh, because there's just so many good artists that I love. Um, and the other one would be... This is horrible. <laughs> Probably T. T. Yeah, <laughs> T. Lopez. And that would make four of us. That would make four of us. And it'd be literally Latina power. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. It's a, it's an interesting mix. But it yeah, I, I would love to know how that would sound. So <laughs> that's that's uh, interesting. Um, did you ever hang out with Crystal Harris who sang Supergirl? You know what? I didn't. We didn't really have... Um, Like, I want to say we performed together a few times, but we didn't actually have, like, that time to hang out because we were just always busy, you know? Like, mm -hmm. the time we were together, um, mm -hmm. we were super busy. And I remember mm -hmm. one time, did get the chance to Do you remember Hoku? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we performed with Hoku, and it was um, Bahamut, and it was um, a -teens. Oh, my God. How did I forget to mention a -teens that I toured oh, with? Oh, I love them. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, and I remember those shows that we had where, like, we were all just so, um, you know, into our own show and making sure we were all good with our show. And and you're just, like, from A, B, and C to your dressing room, you know, and, and mm -hmm. to interview and, and all that. So, but she's she's a cool girl. I, I don't know if I, I know her album, but I'm not so familiar with her music. I, I had to. Uh, check her out. Did you go to any Disney premieres in the early 2000s? I did. I got to go to... Um, do you guys remember the movie Max Keeble? Max Keeble's Big Move? I don't know if you guys remember that, but I was actually in that movie. Oh, and, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And so I went to that premiere, obviously, because you know, I, was, I was in there. I was like, I was like the best friend to the To the popular mean girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it was that movie. It was, I went to Recess, went mm -hmm. to that well. And 
I went to the Princess Diaries as well. I had we even did like a dinner, red carpet, and all of that. It was so much fun. Um, and I'm trying to think of if there was any other ones. I was really so busy on stage, more touring mm -hmm. than anything that I was invited to many of them. Uh, but because my priority was always music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I never left, you know, being on tour and on stage for like premieres and stuff, unless like I was a part of it. No, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And Justin says, I believe Josh Peck from Drake and Josh was in that movie. The one that I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's okay. a lot of Disney kids in that movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I, I, I don't remember that movie. Uh, Wyatt Maryfield says, Myra, I wish I can give you a big hug. Oh, me too, Wyatt. Happy belated birthday. He's a fan that's followed me for, for quite some time. And, um, oh. And I love that he's always in tune with everything that I'm up to and that, you know, that we're doing. So a big, big hug to you, Wyatt. Thanks for being here, Wyatt. And other question I always ask, you're going to hate me for doing this to you. Um, <laughs> you are dropped in an island all by yourself. Ooh. And you can only take five of your favorite albums with you. Oh, my God. Which ones would you take? Yeah, I know you hate me. <laughs> oh. God. Uh, okay, so okay, I would take. Do you remember the album that Whitney put out, um, that with the Heartbreak Hotel song? Uh, yeah, uh, for your love. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think something. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that album. Um, okay. I would take probably the Britney Spears first album that ever came out. The baby because, one more time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a funny one, I think. Um, but it just keeps my spirits up. And um I would I would take mine. I would honestly take mine. Uh, my my debut album. And so that's three. I would take the Luna. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I would take uh I'm such a hopeless romantic, I swear. Like, I would take um, probably a Christina Aguilera one. Oh, Not okay. Sure. Probably like her, her her first one. Well, I don't know, because all of her albums have songs that I just absolutely love. So it'd be hard to pick which one, but one of hers. Oh, okay. So uh, have you listened to her? Uh, someone asked her latest EP that she released now you that she's what? singing reggaeton. <laughs> I just heard about that literally like two days ago and mm -hmm. i haven't had a chance to sit down and check it out but i'm gonna do that tonight same here that's yeah. on the bucket list <laughs> so uh yeah. now um myra it's been a pleasure talking to you i mean i, I could do this for hours <laughs> i know me too. me too i hope i hope you enjoy this <laughs> I did. I truly did. I've been, you know, it's been a while, like I mentioned, um, of us trying to link and, you know, and get this done for, for us and for everybody watching and listening. Um, I'm excited, excited for the new music that's coming and, and, um, you know, and, and I hope everybody goes out there and supports it for whatever it's worth for the new, you know, music coming even after that, um, for you guys to stay tuned and, and check it out. Oh, yes. Don't forget that Myra's new song, La Llave, in English, the key, is going yeah. to be um, available on Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Valentine's Day. So, uh, <laughs> yes, can't wait for her new music. Can't wait, too. I mean, we are so excited to have you back, Myra. And um, all I can say is thank you and for answering all my <laughs> my messages. I was, like, so excited to talk to you. And when you sent me, she sent me her phone and she was like you can call me and I'm like okay I'm calling Myra so <laughs> who, who I used to grow with and uh, listen to when I was growing up so okay I'm gonna call of Myra so. of course. <laughs> now we're in touch and um and we'll continue to stay in touch for all these new projects and ventures coming yes. coming our way and I do I, I appreciate you so much Maria for for the love behind your you know pop music I oh, appreciate so much no. for that You are very educated in your pop music. Oh, And thank you. <laughs> you made me um, think back on so much. And so oh. that's wonderful. And a big kiss and a big hug to you. 
big fuck big kiss to you thanks everyone for watching uh, so stay tuned for what's coming next i hope more interviews on the way i don't have anyone yet but hopefully someone uh, soon and myra will be we'll be, we will be staying in touch probably let's let's do this again let's do when, it again. we have more totally so we'll definitely link back up yes definitely and please don't leave i need to ask you something okay. uh, I'm going to end the, the live show, but please don't leave. Okay. Yeah. So thanks everybody for watching. Big hug and big kiss to everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>